the next speaker, um, I would like to invite George uh, Tabat, sorry, Tabatadze, uh, who is going to talk about the uh, um, digital radi autoradiography of Amarillo-241 spatial distribution with trabecular bone regions. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, well, uh, my family is in the audience, and uh, my son is in the age that he's curious about what kind of work do I do. And that's, uh, Nick, it's, uh, that's what I do. You can learn today. <laughs> um, uh, this work, there's a little study, uh, but I think very interesting study was done uh, in collaboration with uh, Brian Miller, who was the one who developed uh, uh, the uh, imager used for other radiography in this study. Uh, why do we care about it? Um, well, today I'm not going to present anything really new that has not been done, and probably it will be repeated many times because uh, this is a hot topic. Um, if you if you're willing to converge from uh, reference man and from one parameter fits all type of world, then you have to actually look inside an individual case and measure um, the distribution to assess those better, I guess. Um, and everything is due to, uh, due to the changes in anatomy and physiology in, in humans. As our fingerprints differ of each individual, our anatomy and physiology, so our diets differ, our uh, stress on our bones differ, so that uh, predetermines the deposition. Mostly. So the uh, goals that have been set for this uh, study uh, is a visualization and uh, evaluation of the radionuclide distribution within uh, trabecular bone ridges, being a cortical bone, trabecular bone, and trabecular spangiosa. Um, I didn't go farther enough to go into the surfaces yet because this is a more or less ongoing study. Uh, and the second goal is this estimation of uh, americium-241 activity concentration using digital uh, other radiography technique. Uh, approaches, so we did the did the digital other radiography using uh, ionizing radiation quantum imaging detector. Um, for benchmarking, uh, uh, the uh, uh, samples were analyzed using uh, traditional radiochemical analysis techniques and alpha spectroscopy. And uh, also, the numbers were compared with predictions uh, made using ICRP defaults. Uh, just briefly about the case, uh, you'll hear uh, more uh, on this case in the afternoon se uh, section, at the end of the afternoon section. But uh, this uh, case, 846 USTR case, uh, whole body donation, uh, was from the individual uh, with the chronic inhalation of americium 241 for uh, two, uh, maybe three years. Um, it estimated initial body burden uh, for that individual was 66.6 kilobecquerel. Um, decorporation therapy was performed for a seven year period uh, where it reduced the, uh, uh, re uh, re the residual body burden and after that was about 26.6 kilobecquerels. Um, the person was uh, died from non-radiation uh, induced uh, uh, diseases. Uh, so. Uh, the cause of death was heart failure, uh, and he or she <laughs> died uh, post-exposure 40 year, uh, 41 years. Uh, and activity was assessed post-mortem, uh, about 29.6 kilobecquerels in the skeleton. Uh, sa sample preparation consists of multiple steps. The first, the uh, samples were prepared for other radi radiography. Uh, uh, they were chosen, the samples were chosen from uh, two bones, uh, humerus and uh, clavicle. Uh, sections from those bones were removed from humerus proximal end, humerus proximal shaft, and clavicle acromial end. Uh, they were plastic embedded, and uh, then a, th a thin 100 micron uh, slices sections were uh, cut and polished, and you can see uh, those slides on the bottom of the slide. Uh, then uh, counting was performed with the uh, other radiograph radiography imager that I mentioned, um, uh, iKit, a cute name. Uh, it uh, was previously um, developed and, uh, and, and uh, verified, uh, the sensitivity was verified for various types of radiation, such as alpha, beta, gamma, x-rays, neutrons, and uh, fusion fragments. Uh, two images were used in this study, 
as I referred to them, large and small, large being 115 active uh, field of view diameter, and a small 40 millimeter. Um, there are some pros and cons using one over the other, but I'm not going to go into these into the details. Um, of course, as any uh, measuring um, device, you have to calibrate it first. So the calibration was performed with a standard source uh, containing plutonium uh, isotopes as well as americium with a total activity of 87 dpms. Uh, and it gave us pretty nice uh, uh, values for detection efficiency being 93.4 and 92.3% uh, for large and small detectors. And then that uh, detection efficiency reduced quite a bit uh, when uh, uh, background filtering was applied. This is a, a post-processing step uh, where you remo remove background. I will talk about that uh, uh, later. So, so it reduced uh, uh, detection efficiency slightly, but it's still pretty good numbers. Um, samples were counted to, uh, between 300 to 1600 hours, uh, and 300 is kind of low for counting, but that's pretty much I ran out of the time at the end, so I had to show you something right today. So there you will see actually on the images I'll show you that uh, 300 hours, uh, the couple, one or two uh, slides were counted. Uh, on average, it was about 1000 hours, the counting now. Data processing, uh, so I just mentioned that background was uh, removed uh, after the counting completed. Um, so uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the image that it looked before. Uh, I, I wish the images came out better. It looks better on the computer screen, but uh, um, number-wise, it was about 95% uh, reduction in the background and only a few percent reduction in the detection efficiency. So. Um, then images were processed us using uh, free software, uh, ImageJ, which is pretty powerful software, and um, segmentation and uh, ROI um, uh, contouring was uh, done in, in all in one software. Um, also samples adjacent or, or, or bone samples adjacent to the ones used for, for other radio radiography were um, uh, digested and uh, analyzed using alpha spec. And uh, we used our standard, uh, it's just a specification, so our uh, alpha spectroscopy unit um, used our uh, standard SOPs for uh, sample digestions for counting and so on and so forth. And uh, the important part is uh, the system, Alpha system, was calibrated with the same source that IKID system. So these are results. Um, some of the bones show, show up really well on the, on the screen, but uh, you probably cannot see anything on the right. That's because it's a sample that we're counting from 300 hours, but there is actually count there. So um, you have humerus proximal end. Uh, uh, humerus proximal shaft and clavicle acromial end on the very right. Uh, you can see really nice distribution on the very top left corner uh, within the trabecular bone regions. If you, uh, I wish I could zoom in the picture farther, so um, it shows uh, nicely uh, uh, images, uh, especially it's nice when it's overlapped, two images, the actual images of the slides overlapped with the bones. So. Surface activity was measured. Uh, average surface activity was measured based on ROI analysis. So you have on the right side, uh, you have the actual IKID image. Then we overlap that based on the anatomical findings on the actual slide itself and calculate what's the average uh, surface activities in the units of millibecquerels per millimeter square. They're all tabulated here. And then maximum activity also was acquired based on uh, a binning method. Uh, the whole image, uh, the, re the resolution is much higher than millimeter square, the, so the whole image was binned down to millimeter square pixel size, and then the maximum was much easier to spot out and, to, and calculate. Uh, this is a, uh, results for uh, activity concentration in humerus. Um, you can, uh, in, in, in red, in dark red, there are there's uh, activity concentrations uh, uh, acquired using IKID, and in the gray, the radio, radiochemistry, radiochemical analysis. They, you can see they're following pretty much the same pattern and pretty good agreement with each other. Uh, same results with, uh, with um, uh, clavicle, but uh, um, this looks like outlier, but uh, uh, it may not be, the actual bars uh, they do not really well um, 
overlap with, with actual uh, um, location of the sampling, and we have to, uh, you have to remember that sampling was done uh, in case of iKit over the 100 centimeter, or 100 micron thick slice, and the radiochemistry was done on the bigger chunk of the bone. So uh, it's hard to overlap and visualize it, but. So th this region was a region where we had the most trabeculae. And this, um, finally, uh, the slide where we show the activity concentration distribution. Um, you have uh, uh, summarized uh, con activity distribution within humerus as well uh, within clavicle on the right side. Uh, the red is IKIT measurements, the gray is radi radiochemistry, and the light gray, uh, uh, very uh, right column in each slide, is uh, ICRP prediction. Uh, so, trabeculic to cortical uh, in humerus is about, uh, or activity concentration ratio is about 2.5, uh, trabecular bone to cortical bone, um, and 1.4 in clavicle versus 0 0.5 predicted by ICRP. Uh, trabecular spongiosa to cortical concentration uh, ratio is about 1.2 and 0.7 for humerus and clavicle respectively versus 0.2 in ICRP. Well. What kind of conclusion can you make based on this slide? Not necessarily that ICRP is wrong or right. Uh, the only thing that I want to point out is how important it is to look at those concentration ratios at case by case basis. Okay. So, and in conclusion, we have successfully measured and visualized the Emerson distribution within case 846 skeleton uh, using iKit as well as. Uh, uh, as well as radiochemistry, radiochemical analysis. Uh, ICRP defaults underestimate amorism concentration ratios by about five times in humerus and three times in clavicle for trabecular to cortical ratio, and about six times and four times uh, in humerus and clavicle respectively for trabecular spongiosa to cortical ratio. <coughs> as I said, uh, this, uh, this is still ongoing study and uh, additional bone samples may need to be evaluated given a uh, enough time and enough motivation. And thank you very much. I will take questions. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. The, I, I wondered if you could uh, define the, your spongiosa region. Was that a sum of your activity in the trabecular bone plus? Plus marrow. Plus marrow space. Yes. So in your sectioning, then, you maintain the integrity of the, the marrow is? Most, most of the time, yes, most of the time. Um, uh, I think there was one bone only that, or two bo bone slices that we didn't have that, but uh, I haven't used numbers. I haven't, the spongiosa region wasn't defined for those bones. So if there is a number, it's there. At least I think it's there. <laughs> More questions, please. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is a very interesting and uh, a good technique to be applied. So how long does it take to uh, analyze the samples? By analysis, do you mean counting or, or post-counting analysis? Yeah, post-counting. Post-counting analysis. Well, figure out how to analyze. It took me quite a bit of time. But once you know how to analyze, I would say about two to three hours per sample. To, to, to start from beginning to end to have those numbers. And the total analysis, um, how long does it take? Uh, the end? counting time, as I said, on average, uh, to, to get a good, uh, it all depends what kind of uncertainty you're willing to, uh, you know, deal with. Uh, I would say to get a, to get macro scale picture, it's probably about 1,000 hours. If you want to go to the micro scale and actually go into the uh, trabecular and cortical bone surfaces, you will need more counts within those regions, so I would say about, well, longer time, 2,000, 3,000 hours, I don't know. Good thing is, good thing about the, uh, this is that you can, uh, unlike uh, um, conventional autoregiography, you can stop counting at any time, look at the picture, analyze it. If you like it, what you see, you stop eventually and you know, proceed with other samples. If you don't like it, you can continue counting. So it's a real-time autoregiography using the naked. Very impressive. Thank you. Since we're a little bit ahead of schedule, I'll, I'll ask the question. Uh, yes. 
Well, first of all, and the good news is, it's always nice when an experiment produces exactly what you would expect. Because <laughs> this case had like 60 years of bone remodeling post intake, so you'd expect a pretty 41 good years distribution. Okay. But the, uh, just a question on your ICRP values. Did you take those from the initial distribution and then run the biokinetic model out for the 40 years? Or is that This is based on uh, IMBA calculation. Okay. Okay. Yes, cool. and 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 the default ICRP parameters of uh, you know every part of my was default. We didn't play with parameters. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you all.